completing the square part one, the theory. Okay, we're going to examine some of the theory behind completing the square, and, and one of the most important th things we're going to do with completing the square is create perfect square trinomials. And we need to understand what a perfect square trinomial is and uh, all its characteristics. So we're going to take a few of these uh, binomials and we're going to square them to see what we get, and then we're going to examine them a little bit. Uh, x minus 2 squared, remember how we square a binomial. The first term is, you have to excuse my writing here a little bit until I get this writing going, x squared, uh, and we multiply negative 2 times x and double it, negative 4x, right? And we square the last term, plus 4, right? Here we do the same thing, x times 1 is x, double that, and we get 2x, that's our middle term. Our first term, of course, is x squared, I'm sorry. And then our second term is x times 1, which gives us x, we double that, plus 2x. And then we square 1, and we get plus 1. And that's how we square a binomial. Now we'll square them all here. So we get x squared. Uh, x times negative 3 is negative 3x times 2 is negative 6x, isn't it? And then we get negative 3 squared, and we get plus 9. It's very important to understand that we, when we square a binomial, you just don't square the first term and subtract the second term squared from it. You're going to get three terms every time. Here we have x squared. Okay, and x times that is 1 half x times 2 is x plus x. And then we square 1 half, I think we get 1 fourth, don't we? Okay, and then here we have x minus 7 thirds squared, so we get x squared. And x times uh, 7 thirds is uh, 7x over 3 times 2 is 14x over 3, right? Minus 14x over 3. 14, or 14 thirds x might be a clearer way of writing this. Uh, plus what? 49 ninths. 7 sevens are 49, and 3 squared is 9. And so each one of these is a perfect square, let me make that look better, perfect square trinomial, and it can be factored into, into these squared binomials. Let's examine the perfect square trinomials. The third of the perfect square trinomial, I've abbreviated that there, is always positive. Well, let's see if that's true. Uh, the third term, I mean, the third of the perfect square trinomial is always positive. Well, I go down here, plus 4, plus 1, plus 9, plus 1 fourth, plus 49 ninths. doesn't matter whether there's a negative here or a positive. The third term here, if this is going to go back to here as a perfect square, then uh, this third term has to be positive. The sign of the second term of the perfect square trinomial is the same as the middle term of the binomial. Well, let's see. The sign of the second term is the same as this middle term. Now, that's true there, plus, plus, oops, put a little line there, minus, minus, plus, plus, minus, minus. Seems to be true. The third term of the perfect square trinomial, put a dot there, uh, equals one-half the coefficient, misspell coefficient, coefficient, I think that's right, uh, of the second term of the perfect square trinomial quantity squared. Well, let's see what that means. So the third term of the perfect square trinomial equals one half the coefficient of the second term of the perfect square trinomial, and then that quantity should be squared. Well, let's see if that mean, what that really means. Let's go over here to the first one. We look at the second, the third term is supposed to be one half this term quantity squared. That is, if I take one half times negative four, 4, okay, I take that quantity and square it, it should give me the third term. Well, 1 half negative 4 is negative 2, negative 2 squared is 4. Well, it worked there. Let's try this one here. Uh, 1 half times 2, quantity squared, uh, squared, I want to square there, equals uh, 1. Well, it's 1, isn't it? Let's try this one. 1 half times negative 6 quantity squared equals negative, what's the negative 3 squared is 9. Well, that worked there. Same here. This is 1. 1 half of 1 squared is 1 fourth. 1 half of negative 14 thirds is negative 7 thirds. Negative 7 thirds squared is 49 ninths without doing the actual computations. So we can see that that's true. So all these three observations are true, and these are going to help us uh, create perfect square trinomials. 
We're going to create perfect square trinomials from two terms now. So I have two terms, x squared plus 4x, and I want a third term such that it'll be a perfect square uh, trinomial. In other words, I can write a binomial squared and, e and it will equal this. So what am I supposed to do to get my third term? I multiply 1 half, right? Uh, get that 2 better, times 4. And then what am I supposed to do? Square that whole thing, right? That'll give me my third term, because that's what we noticed in the last... Uh, in the last example. So that's 4. So it says I should put a 4 here. And this should give me what? This should give me x plus 2, right? Quantity squared. Because I just take the square of this and this is for the second root of this, second root of this, put a positive in there because positive is going to match this thing right here, the second one. This is always positive. So I found a number such that when I add it to this binomial, I'll have a perfect square trinomial. Okay. But what would I add here? Well, I need to do 1 half, once again, times negative 3 fourths. Okay. And I've got to square that quantity because that's what we learned to do. And it looks like I'm going to get negative 3 eighths. And negative 3 eighths is po a positive number, but it's 9 8 eighths are 64, aren't they? So I have to put 9 64 right here. Uh, can you read that okay? 9 64. There it is. And this is going to give me, of course, it's going to give me x minus something, isn't it? And it's going to the square, the second root of this is 3 eighths. 3 over 8. I did that pretty good. That's not bad. My writing looks a little like a 9 year old on this pad, but you have to get used to that, okay? Now, I need a, a, a third term here to make this a perfect square trinomial, okay? And 1 half of 7, negative 7, is negative 7 halves. If I square 7 halves, I'll get positive 49 fourths, won't I? I always get positive number there. And this gives me x minus uh, 7 halves, right? Quantity squared. In other words, I found a term here so I can have a perfect square trinomial, and this is the square. This is what I, the binomial I have to square to get this trinomial. Here, this is a pretty easy one. 1 half 8 is 4, 16, isn't it? And this gives me x. It's got to be plus because this term is plus. Notice these terms always match. Be careful about that. Uh, x plus 4, quantity squared. And this is called completing the square. Notice one thing that the coefficient here is always 1. It has to be in order for this completing the square trick to work.